Look what the cat dragged in. <laughs> KBO sent me their Tornado Fat Tire e-bike to review. So in today's video, we're gonna do that. Somebody told me you don't need a hatchet to open this, but what's the fun in that? It's actually really ineffective. Let me try. You have to do it, Tortoise. Nice! This one comes with green paint and mechanical disc brakes, paired up to 160 millimeter rotors, externally mounted controller, Comes with a rear rack, and at the time of this recording, it's a $1,500 bike on sale for $1,250. I chose the step-through frame because I like step-through frames, but it also comes in a high step frame. Externally mounted battery. It's actually not externally mounted, it's kind of like semi-integrated. Battery is 48 volts, 14 amp hour, 672 watt hours of energy on a 73 pound bike with a KBO branded 750 watt hub motor. Of course, the Tornado runs knobby, four inch wide fat tires, pretty similar to every other fat tire e-bike. And the 160 millimeter rotors paired up to mechanical disc brakes are a little bit under the normal spec we see on fat tire e-bikes, $1,250 is also a little bit lower on price. And according to the website, that controller, 18 amp controller, that'd make for 864 watts of power. Website states 45 miles of range, 350 pound weight capacity, and it also says Samsung slash LG cells in the battery. But don't worry, we're gonna put it on the steep hill and also do a range test. What's the charger? Basic two amp charger. That's the slow charger, so we better get it on there now. Come take a look at the seat. It's a wide, squishy seat. Gotta get those handlebars. I'm gonna put the handlebars on. It's got a bell, and I actually have not seen this display yet. Break. Get to use my favorite new tool. Ah, no I don't. Wait, yes I do. This one has a quick release lever. We're gonna have to adjust the mechanical disc brakes. Pedals on. I'm noticing a relatively short wheelbase, which should make for a nice easy reach. Dude, I think somebody stepped on my tire. There's a footprint on there. <laughs> we get six gears on the rear cog, one less than I usually see on these with a Shimano Turney derailleur. Rear fender comes installed. The gear guard does not come installed. Yes, that's what this is. This is to guard your derailleur. We'll put this on. There's a open and lock adjustment on the front fork. The headlight runs on its own battery. There's no cable that plugs into the on bike battery. Press that button to turn it on. And this light has its own battery. It's got ergonomic style faux leather grips. Adjustments for your pedal assist right here. And a six speed Shimano shifter with the twist throttle on the right. And as I mentioned, mechanical brake levers. It's got some eyelets here. And the rack seems to have some sort of attachment points. So this battery on there. It's got a USB charging port right here. All right, let's power this thing up. Get a basic display. So it gives you your voltage of the battery in terms of a voltage. Shows you your current. So how much power the bike is pulling in amps. RM, is that the rotational speed of the motor? Trip time and your odometer in miles, as well as trip. So battery is 51.3 volts. Shows that we have a full charge. 51.4 volts on a 48 volt battery is not quite 100%, so we'll let it charge up a bit more. And of course, the typical five levels of pedal assist. And this is a basic cadence sensor bike. Pull the brake levers, no brake light or light at all on the back. See what happens if I twist the throttle on pedal assist five. Wheel spins up to 20 miles per hour, 19.7. All right, I don't know what RM is, we'll find out. All right guys, let's take the KBO Tornado out for a test drive. The battery says full, voltage shows 53 volts. According to a 48 volt chart, that would be 90% charged. We're going for it. There's something in the way here. We'll start with the Strava so we can see what kind of range we get. Owner's manual says, do not climb hills steeper than 15% in grade. This is a 20% hill grade. So we're gonna start this review off the same way we do every one of my reviews and crank this thing up the pedal assist five to a, I weigh 200 pounds, full throttle from a stop. And are we gonna get crushed? Whoa. The bike is actually kind of pulling us up without pedaling. I think it's gonna need a little bit of a rollout though. So pedal assist five with a little bit of a rollout, throttle only, I weigh 200 pounds, go. From five miles an hour, not the strongest hill climbing bike on its own, but with a little bit of rollout, let's go ahead and bump it down to gear one, give it a little bit of help pedaling. Oh, gears aren't lined up out of the box. Put it on two and it can do it. Go ahead and see if we can raise the seat up a little bit. It does have the quick release lever, so 
So I'm six foot five and I weigh 200 pounds. Saddle on max height comes up to about there on the Tornado. All right, so pedal assist zero, doesn't give you anything. Even if you use a throttle, pedal assist one, current bumps up to eight amps, nine amps. Uh, takes us up to 10 miles an hour. Pedal assist two, brings us to about 14 before it reduces the current. Mechanical disc brakes are feeling very mechanical disc brakesy. Hydraulic brakes are always better than mechanical disc brakes, but mechanical are cheaper. They work. We'll have to see how the rotors hold up. They're 160 millimeter rotors, and this bike does weigh over 70 pounds. Bumping on to pedal assist three, cruising along here, give it a little bit of pedaling. It is a cadence sensor. It eases on the power, so it's not like abrupt, but I can actually feel it is like a pretty powerful feeling motor. So that'll take us up to about 16 and level us off there. Cruising at 16 on gear three. I'm gonna bump it up to gear five of six. A lot of times we see seven or eight gears on these bikes. So this will just hold us at about 16 miles an hour. Bump it on a pedal assist four. Gives us a boost in current up to 13, 13 amps up to 18 miles an hour. I can feel the shorter wheelbase of this bike. I do not mind it. It will probably give us a little trouble with the wheel hitting our foot. Maybe, we'll see. So let's bump it onto pedal assist five now. And that'll give us 17 amps of current about. Cut us off at 20. So this is a class two e-bike out of the box. It'll cut you off at 20. We're gonna increase the top speed here in just a minute. Feels like a nice bike to ride though. Um, right out of the box. It's, it's as comfortable as every other bad tire e-bike. Go ahead and try the throttle on pedal assist five. So it's giving us current. It ramps on the current, so it's not like a, a jarring launch or anything. So by having the bike ramp on power slowly, it'll help conserve battery, but make for definitely a less thrilling ride. Take it off road just a little, little bit here. I mean, it's a fat tire e-bike. I'm bouncing around, but it's got that front suspension. Your favorite part, let's see how this thing does out in traffic. Top speed of 20. Uh, I wish I'd go a little faster. We'll, uh, skate through here so i'm going i'm going to be doing a lot of throttle today feeling just like throttle mode fat tires coming in handy here Let's see if we can cut across some lanes here get in the turning lane over here brakes are a little squeaky i wish it would uh accelerate a little faster for riding in traffic we're gonna do zero to 20 speed here i weigh 200 pounds uh no pedaling gps in my left hand Ready, go. Ten. Fifteen. Seventeen. Eighteen. Nineteen. Twenty. So whatever that is. Not thrilling, but uh, you know. It's got a battery, it's got a motor. It'll carry you along. Let's unlock the top speed. We'll try out the cadence sensor lag and all that stuff in just a few, but let's pull up the menu here, put in a password, hold down this button to enter it. Tab on over to 8P here by pressing that button. And then it's set at 32 out of the box to, uh, I don't know, 66. Oh no, that's not how you do it then. So even if you're pedaling, it'll still cut you off at 20 miles an hour rolling into a gentle hill here pedal assist three pedaling on uh, gear five bringing us up here just fine let's check and see how the pedal assistant sensor is how the lag is so not pedaling pedaling power it gives you a it keeps going a little bit after you let off so not pedaling pedaling power ramps on very slowly there's a little bit of a lag, so um, not pedaling, pedaling, power, but it just like ramps on slowly, so you can't like exactly tell when it's kicking on. Jamming, dude, jamming all the time out here. We got a little bit of speed on this thing, though. Let's see if we can overtake the scooter. We can do this. It's all about having a good time out here, right? Tires are, you gotta love the four inch fat tires, man. You know, they take away from the efficiency and stuff, but they really do absorb the bumps in the pavement. So it's not the most powerful motor I've tried, but let's try and go in the sand here up this hill. Give it a little bit of throttle ahead of time to compensate for the leg. Oh man, not really quite going up this hill. Not quite here, but we'll give it a little throttle. 
and step through frame so gotta love the step through frame i have noticed the ergonomic hand grips here um they're not the kind that are like bolted in place so it kind of rotated on me a little bit but they're fine they're comfortable grips though stone cold takes out america oh man you gotta be careful about this uh fender down here and this tire like my toe just kind of hit the the knobby tread there and it like started pulling my foot up keep your foot in the right place and not too far forward because if you get it too far forward it'll kind of clip there man if you want to do off-roading this bike definitely has wide enough tires to do so uh, so I can get through the sand and I see how the power holds up here bouncing around a lot um, under power throttle only now I'm adding a little pedal I wouldn't want to do it but it'll do it <laughs> Right, let's give this hill a test. I'll put it on uh, pedal assist three to start. Drop it down to gears, uh, gear two, and pedal assist three. I'm gonna bump it to five. It's giving us 18 amps of current. I mean, it's bringing us up this hill. Yeah, it's bringing us up this hill just fine. It'll do it under throttle only. As long as it's got some momentum. I'm just gonna try the California Incline. Fat Tire Gang, what? The California Incline is an 85 foot climb, 7% grade. Let's see if the tornado can do it. Rolling into the little loop here. Throttle only, let's see how it does. 13 amps of current, slowing seven miles an hour. It's bringing us up. Throttle only, I mean, it's better than acoustic. Now for the actual California incline, throttle only. We're gaining speed. I'm just gonna give it a little bit of pedaling here. It'll do it just fine. Let's just see if the controller holds up for the length of the 85 foot climb, 7% grade, giving us uh, 17, 16 amps. Voltage sag is at 44.4 under acceleration and we're hitting 16 miles an hour at the top. And as you probably already know, we were just down there. So the brakes are mechanical and they are 160 millimeter rotors under spec compared to most fat tire e-bikes I review. They're a little bit squeaky. A lot of the fat tire e-bikes I review have hydraulic disc brakes. They give you a smoother feel and they're just easier to grab. Um, when I'm grabbing these, they just, they don't feel like super like linear, like they kind of grab a little bit here, then not so much on the next place on the rotor. If you're just going to be doing some like light, easy riding, they'll be fine for you. But hydraulic's definitely better. Well, let's say you're cruising at 20 and you get yourself in an emergency situation. You just need to stop really fast. Will they work? Let's find out. Yeah, they work. It's not the fastest stopping distance I've ever experienced, but they're, they're decent. They're all right. The 160 millimeter rotors won't be able to dissipate heat as quickly as a larger rotor. So if you need to do like a lot of repeated braking, doing like a downhill mountain climb, you might want to look for bigger rotors. Getting it. Do a quick little brake test here from Tony. Good enough. All right guys, been out here for an hour and 18 minutes, 13.6 miles of ride time. I'll leave you with my final range here in just a minute, but first let me leave you with my final thoughts on the KVO Tornado. So all around this bike, it has pretty basic specs. The battery's pretty decent, 14 amp hour, 48 volt. In general, this is kind of more of one of your more basic fat tire e-bikes with the externally mounted controller, semi-integrated battery. Suspension doesn't have adjustments, but it does have suspension on the front. Only six gears instead of like seven or eight eight mechanical disc brakes instead of hydraulic disc brakes and it doesn't like dominate hills but you know if you give it a little bit of assistance going up the hill pedaling it'll get you up some hills so at the time i'm making this video this bike is listed on sale for twelve hundred and forty nine dollars normally fifteen hundred dollars oh, i got in the way of the lifeguard here so i mean at the end of the day it's kind of just you know what is your budget for an e-bike this is definitely one of the uh more cheaper ones at $1,249. And also to match that price, you're kind of getting 
a little bit lower on the specs compared to some of the other fat tire e-bikes I've reviewed on this channel. So that's a decision for you to make. If you do want to grab one, I do have a link below this video in the description box. If you did buy through that link, it would help support my reviews on this channel. I think I saw somebody said something about they don't care if I'm going the wrong way down a highway as long as I make a good review, right? Your comment is appreciated. So before we take a look at the range, KBO has two new models. One is called the Oasis. Their own verbiage describes it as the epitome of cool. It's a $1,400 e-bike with a 720 watt hour battery and a 500 watt hub motor. They claim you can get 55 miles. And the other bike is the KBO Compact. It's a foldable e-bike. Also costs a dollar short of $1,400. It's got a 748 watt hour battery and a 750 watt hub motor. You can learn more about these bikes by clicking the link in the description box. So we're at 17.3 miles, hour and 33 minutes of ride time. I've been heavily relying on the throttle. It says three bars of battery and 45 volts. According to the good old voltage chart here, a 48 volt battery at 45.3 volts is about 40%. So the energy bar does indicate about 40%. So if you put a little pedaling in, you could probably do 45 miles on this bike, no problem. The way I ride, I'd probably get mm, 35, 40. Throttle only, probably end up getting more like 25 to 30 miles. This battery is feeling a little weak right now. If this is not the bike you're looking for, you can watch this video next. Thanks for watching guys. Give me a thumbs up, drop a comment. Catch you next time.